Hello everyone, welcome back to Rating Road. As you can tell from the title of the video, I'm going to be focusing on creating some overgrown or disused sidings today. If you guessed in the last video what this track of the back was for, then it uh, seems uh, blatantly obvious now what it will be. But indeed it is going to be a disused siding to uh, practice on before I tackle it on the main layout. So the ballast on this piece of track has gone off. As you can probably tell as well, I have used steel track because, well, I, I didn't use it anyway on the layout and it's going to be all grimed up and uh, scenery on top of it anyway, so that didn't really matter too much really. But anyway, that's uh, the focus of this video, so I'm going to get cracking straight on with it and I hope you enjoy it. So as you can see, I'm currently on the layout part and I've weathered up to the, just beyond the point, which I did in the last video. So what I've got to do now is just weather the track just further up to the end there. And then a good half of that siding will be overgrown but still in use. So I will be having locos coming up and down the siding still uh, once it's all done. Just before filming the video, I was messaged on Facebook by a guy called Charlie Willis. This photo belongs to him. But he kindly offered to take some pictures for me because he was going on a trip to Ipswich. And uh, he got some really good pictures of the station and the depot for me. And I highly appreciate that. Thanks, Charlie. But as you can see, this is the sort of effect I'm going for. Uh, the track in particular in focus is the one closest in shot. So as you can see, the grass that sort of takes over the siding itself comes up to about rail level. Then you've got some old rails in between the tracks and uh, like a gravel dirt path next to the track as well for the drivers to access the station and the depot buildings. Uh, there's also some points of interest that I've taken from the picture as well, but that'll, that'll be for future videos. So thanks again to Charlie for uh, allowing me to use these pictures as reference. And then of the same location, but just a bit further up the platform, uh, you can see how the uh, same effect does go on for a fair distance up the siding itself. So that's what I'm going to be adopting and using on the layout. So first things first, I need to weather the track along all the way up. I'm going to do that the same method I done this, in the, which I briefly showed in the last video or at least I uh, showed how I build up the weathering, but not at least to this state. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just show a brief time lapse. Uh, I won't go into too much detail because as I said, I covered that in the last video, but I'll just go through the step-by-step -step guide on how I just get it to this sort of state. Just before I get into the time lapse, just a quick reminder of what paints I'm using. So there's Life Color Diorama Series UA720, and UA723. These are part of a track weathering set and I'll leave a link in the description. Um, and then I'm just gonna quickly turn these around so you can see what colors they are. So the one on the left is track dirt and the one on the right is weathered black. Um, I, do, I did have roof dirt, which is also in the same set, but I used all that up. So I'm just using what I've got of the weathered black really before I uh, just might as well just finish the whole setup really. But anyway, I'm just gonna get Get on with the time lapse. So once again, using the track dirt colour, I paint the rails brown. I also paint the, cut, the tops of the rails brown as well because I can get away with doing that as there won't be any trains running on top of it. And then with the airbrush, I'll use the weathered black first of all, just to tone down the ballast to make it darker. And then I go heavier in some places and lighter in others just to create different tones of the gray. And then I'll go over the ballast with the airbrush again and the track dirt color to give it more of a brown appearance. And again, create some more tones of the browns within the gray. And then finally go over the whole thing again with the weathered black just to tone it down even further, make the brown show less. 
and what this does is create a nice combination of tones of the browns and the greys within each other. I did like the effect it came out. So once you've done that, then you've pretty much weathered the track and you're all ready to apply your grass on top. So that's now the track all weathered for the siding and I applied a coat of varnish on top of it just to seal it in. As you can see, it's a lot heavier than that of the running line next to it. And I like how the uh, concrete trunking looks as well. It's, it does stand out beyond the darkness. And that's pretty much the same all the way up there. As you can probably tell on the side, it does look a bit lighter, but then once the sh shadow is cast on it, it goes darker. So a lot of that is the light of the room. It isn't as dark by eye. But that's all done. It's getting late now, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to leave it a good a good day's worth. I'll come back in tomorrow after work, just carry on and start adding the uh, grass on top of it. So as you can see, I've been working on it and I've been trying out different methods, techniques, colours, lengths, etc. Just to find what effect will be best to use. Uh, I'm not sure how easy it is to see, but I have split the track into four segments. So there's one here, one here, one here, and one right at the end here. Um, these two in front, they're more subtle. Uh, at the back, I did go to town quite a bit. And um, this one's probably the heaviest I'd go on the overgrown scale, whereas this is certainly more disused. So starting from the left, just zooming in on the indiv individual segments. Uh, this one's the lightest of, the, of them all. So this one's certainly the uh, least overgrown. And I had done that one just by using some Woodland Scenics um, two mil fibers in light green color. I do like how that looks. Um, what I was thinking was maybe going, not covering the whole area, but maybe just putting light patchy areas rather than covering the whole thing. This one doesn't look that much different, but this one is in fact taller. Uh, I'm not sure how well it com comes up on the camera, but that one was done out of a mixture of um, four mil and two mil. And um, the four mil, I did flatten down a little bit. And that was, um, I think it was dark green, again by Woodland Scenics. And then it was also some light green two mil like the other end. And then this one is the this is where we get a lot more overgrown and now the grass is starting to become about rail level. And you can also see there's an old rail within the middle of the tracks as well on top of the grass. So that is a build up of two mil and four mil and then another layer of two mil on top of it. So um, they're the same as before, just built on top of each other really. Um, again, they're Woodland Scenics two mil light grey and four mil dark grey. So then this is certainly more disused level. So now the grass is basically um, just coming above the track completely and there's not really much you can see. So again, that's just a, another further build up, but I also used some scatter underneath. Uh, this was the first one I'd done out of all of them. So it was the first attempt, if you want to call it that. So this one is certainly the uh, heavier overgrown state. So I hope, I don't know if, if you could see it well, but each layer or each segment is different. It's uh, lighter or not as tall. And that's what I uh, want to achieve. So the next step is to try and blend it all in better. And I'm going to use the rest of the diorama to do that. So I'm going to do another time lapse now and just blend it all starting from here to heavier and then just make my way across and eventually become little, live, uh, little vegetation. Because like I said, on the main layout, there, it will be transitioning between no to very little vegetation and then get to a more overgrown state like that. So I'm going to get cracking on with that now.
So hopefully you can see that between these two, this side is generally uh, quite lighter. I didn't apply as much static grass this time, so I'm going to carry on and add even less and then just carry on blending it so I get to the end there. So now looking at these two segments, hopefully um, the one on the right again doesn't look as built up as the one before it. So I am happy with how that's coming along. So now I'm just going to finish this last little area off now and just blend it all into a uh, little or to no vegetation at all. So there's the section where I didn't go as heavy and I really do like how that turned out. Just kept it really, really subtle. And I've just got to now wait till for the little blobs of glue that just stand out just to dry and they'll look, pretty much disappear. So I applied the static grass and just really spaced out the blobs of glue to make the grass look more like little clusters rather than just a whole layer of it everywhere. And as you can also tell, I glued in an old rail in between the two running rails. What I'm inclined to do is just add some more uh, static grass clusters just along around it. I'll probably go bigger because these fibers are all two mil. So I may add some four mil and six mil in some places and also along the uh, rest of the running track as well, just to add a bit more interest. But overall, if I just zoom out, I am happy with how that's looking. And that is pretty much the, uh, what I was aiming to achieve. Um, I do, I will be using this pretty much how this looks. So if I just put my hand, so that's pretty much the effect I'm going to be going for on the main layout. But what I'll probably do is blend it more in the middle a bit more rather than pretty much go from very light to still quite heavy. But overall, I am generally happy with that. So quick word of advice. So in front of me is you can is a little mini Dyson. You can see I used to hoover up the excesses of on the layout and on the diorama. And when you hoover up things like static grass, you will notice that a, a lot of it will go to waste. So unfortunately, all of that glass grass in there, it's not very clear because uh, it's obviously a bit uh, dirty. But you get an idea on how much static grass is in there and how much that could have gone to use. So uh, what I've started doing is I've started adding this old sock on top of it. It's nothing special, just found it in, at the bottom of my drawer and it's, and it's an odd sock anyway, so it will do. And as you can also tell, it catches the uh, static grass. It also um, calms down the vacuum a lot as well, so it won't. Uh, you won't have to worry about bringing up uh, glued down pieces of grass or ballast or anything like that. So doing that saves a hell of a lot of static grass and other materials that would otherwise go to waste. So I'd uh, highly recommend doing that if you don't already. So I've just finished adding in some more static grass clusters in between the tracks, uh, mainly next to the old rail in the middle. And I use some Woodland Scenics light green and some dark green. I use some two mil and four mil to get uh, different tones of green and also some different height in there. And if I now just come along to the left, you can see how then that starts to blend into more grass coverage, which I think looks good. And then you can also see where I've started to add some clump foliage and fine leaf foliage to the more heavier sides, along with some flowering foliage. So if I just slowly pan to the left, I'll uh, talk about that brake van shortly. But as you can see, right up to the buffer stop which I also glued in. It's now heavily overgrown and from this angle you certainly can't see the rails. 
but I'll obviously get a more aerial view later uh, very shortly. So I'm happy with how it's looking. So this brake van I dug out, it's a very old Hornby one and this will be the uh, project for the future. Um, but this will be a brake van, old abandoned uh, nature, taking over it, taking it over. Similar to what I've done with the signal box, but to a wagon this time. I have uh, looked at pictures online and found a good example of one. So I'm pretty much going to copy that as best as I can and also uh, adapt it even further and add my own touches to it. Like I'm also going to add some graffiti and some signs of vandalism, so damage to the structure of it as well. And also add some detailing to it, just the usual stuff really. So that's a, that'll be quite a nice exciting topic for the future I think. So overall I'm now really happy with how this area is looking. And like I said this will eventually turn into a full scene in the future. So now as I pan background you can see how it does start to blend and become less overgrown. And then you can see from this angle how the the amount of foliage also declines and I thought it would be a quite cool feature because it would look like the owners of the railway are planning on maybe getting that wagon out eventually. So they will be cutting back some of the foliage so at least they can get a shunter in there at some point to bring it out. So now that I'm happy with how this came out, I'm going to now move over to the main now and get started on that. But obviously it won't be at this state. It'll probably be that sort of level around the actual buffer stop on the layout, but all of that certainly won't be there because obviously the trains won't be able to run properly. It'll be more like over here, like I've said earlier on in the video. So uh, this is probably the heaviest it will go. And then all of the foliage will be outside and also on the buffer stop. So I'm now going to uh, make a start on doing that.
So as you can see here, you can see the benefit of having a sock or something to catch all the excess in there. There is still a little bit just around the edges, but you know, you get that off with your finger or something. But in there, that's what I hoovered up in excess after the third round of applying the static grass. So when I done the heavier section, so you can see how really how beneficial it is. And the cup was more or less empty. I did completely empty the cup of what I had left. So uh, really you can tell the difference it makes and how much materials you will save because otherwise all that would have gone to waste. But yeah, I just thought I'd show you guys that. So I've just finished doing the siding on the layout. I just need to test it up. It's come out really, really nice. I am really happy with it. And as you can see, I did blend it in and make it go lighter as it more progressed that way. What I'm going to do now is just do another test run and just make sure the track's all good. And I'm just going to go over it again with the track rubber to get any bits of glue off the top and then just run the train across. Then I can add some more detailing. So it all tested good, didn't have any issues at all. So I went ahead and added some detailing. So just gonna zoom in. Got some old rails there, placed in between the tracks as normal. And then the grass is growing up alongside it. There's a couple more rails as well there, which have been bent to match the shape of the mainline curve and also the faint curve in the siding itself as well. And then what I'm going to do is add uh, some more static grass all around it as well just to blend it all in but that'll be a topic for the a future video and then at the far end obviously the glued in the buff stop as well both the buff stops i used in the video while the pico code 75 ball head track ones i chose those over the code 100 ones um, because the siding that the layout is inspired by the ipswich siding which was shown earlier on in the video in the pictures the Code 75 offering more or less completely matches it. So it made sense to use the identical buff stop on the real thing rather than just the one for my um, track code. So yeah, that's why I use that. And I just thought I'd let, let people know what the buff stops were. Okay, so I'm pretty much happy with how the siding's looking for now. I'm not going to add to it further because otherwise the video will just get stupidly long. It's already pushing as it is to be honest. But the next stages is to add some more scenery and static grass, etc., in between the running line and also out down the back here and behind the buff stop itself. And then pretty much do the same further up as well. So add real hints of overgrowth in between up here and also along the running line and the, and the reception road and the point work. So um, I'll get to get those done soon and they'll be the topic for a future video. So there we have it. That pretty much brings an end to the video. I've modelled two different examples of some overgrown or disused sidings. Obviously the one of the layout is more overgrown whereas the one of the diorama is half and half. So hopefully it's given some some of you some inspiration to do this sort of thing on your own layouts and hopefully my um, me showing you how to do it has made you realise how simple it can be and obviously the tip as well on saving some materials so I hope that I hope you've all learned something at least but for now it's bye from me. And I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Take care guys and happy modelling.